In today's world, we know that global trade, fair trade, standards-based trade is the single strongest driver of economic growth that can be had. 40 years of academic data is inequivocal. Economic growth is driven by trade. And so now we come to the currency of trade, e-commerce. E-commerce is the means by which we will link people from the most remotest of villages to the capitals of investment, whether in Toronto, New York, London, anywhere in the world, e-commerce. I can't imagine a more important role than what that of the Alliance is. And that's why I'm so gratified that this Alliance has been successful, that it has been partnering with Prosper Africa, that is partnering with missions under the leadership of the uh, and contributions of the Economics and Market Development Center at USAID, all of our private sector partners, our implementers, this is a necessary precondition for wealth creation, for economic growth through trade. I would like to officially uh, welcome all of you to the Alliance for E-Trade Development Evidence Summit. Um, it's quite a pleasure to be here today. And as you can hear from some of the remarks, it's somewhat of a, a homecoming for me. So uh, it adds extra joy um, to be in person, as you mentioned, Harry, among um, some people who I've not only had the pleasure to work with, but in the spirit of what we're doing today to learn from. And I think that um, <clears throat> that's gonna embody uh, a lot of what the Alliance is going to not only do today, but continues to do is how do we learn and continue to improve. I feel it's important to highlight how the Alliance has positioned itself as a test bed for emerging solutions and services that really help drive digital inclusion and how, and how we allow MSMEs and emerging markets to grow their businesses through e-commerce. I especially appreciate how the Alliance worked with its global partners, such as DHL, UPS, and Google, to identify and test innovative e-commerce models within their local partners. And at the same time, the Alliance has gone straight to the local ecosystem partners to explore opportunities for innovation in Asia, Latin America, Africa, and the Middle East. And finally, I feel that it's important to recognize how the Alliance is poised to help create an ecosystem, an e-commerce ecosystem, where MSMEs, especially those led by women, are really enabled to thrive. This work extends beyond engaging Alliance partners and focuses on data-driven policy dialogues in over 20 countries while engaging regional bodies like the Africa Continental Free Trade Area. While I feel it appropriate to celebrate the Alliance's work to date, today's event is about the exchange of ideas and learning from each other. The Alliance is one of USAID's uh, flagship public-private partnerships uh, managed by uh, our office by the Center for Economics and Market Development. Uh, we're very proud of it, uh, and uh, we're really proud of the way in which the Alliance has given USAID the opportunity uh, to collaborate, as I said earlier, with our private sector partners. So as Paul mentioned, we have um, you know 13 partners by now. We have five work streams. We're working at the policy level, kind of 30,000 foot, uh, to enable uh, policymakers learn about the policies conducive to e-commerce, as well as in the ground zero at SMEs, enabling SMEs in very hands-on mentorship, training, capacity building, um, even in challenging areas like rural areas in, in, um, in Africa and so on. And then we work at the ecosystem level on payment solutions, logistic solutions, and, and um, other uh, programs to essentially enable SMEs to get online, take advantage of e-commerce, grow their sales online, and as, as Deputy Assistant Administrator mentioned, uh, create prosperity in developing countries. Uh, I am working with the Trade Alliance uh, with the E-Commerce Institute, as Kathy mentioned. We have uh, several projects ongoing, uh, and we had a lot of projects uh, in the last four, four years. Um, the importance of, of training uh, with um, as a driver of the uh, e-commerce and, and capacity building uh, in supporting the growth of e-commerce, we we think is crucial uh, because it's crucial and critical because uh, we need more MSMEs with the sufficient skills to empower the uh, digital ecosystem. Uh, we are at the great moment as industry 
to develop the, the, um, the ecosystem and we need more professionalization of the ecosystem. So our mission as the Ecommerce Institute, as a Trade Alliance member, is to provide training and capacity building in order to professionalize these MSMEs and support them. It's very important to provide not only skills, digital skills, um, it's important to provide uh, of, uh, record, uh, resources, uh, tools to, to then can, they can um, to move up in the digital journey, like Kathy mentioned in the, uh, in the graphic that you, you saw uh, recently. From a UPS perspective, I think as I was thinking about this question, there's there's three areas that that really moved us to join the the e trade alliance and why focus on MSMEs. But as we were seeing that, we noticed we noticed that there was need for capacity building for better knowledge or understanding of what they were doing. We cannot do it alone. It takes a community to make it happen, and it's a community of government, of private sector, of of a large enterprises and we also understood that um, that there was how could we as a company where we were focused our goals where we saw that many efforts were being taken place and that's where we decided we're gonna for as a company we launched our women exporter program in 2018 and we saw the trade alliance as an important partner for us to continue be part of a community that can help us to do that outreach globally to women entrepreneurs and it's perhaps the reason why uh, we continue to sort of emphasize the importance of working with the private sector, whether it's in health, education, infrastructure, uh, whatever the case may be. Uh, but it's it, 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 it's 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 important to sort of uh, emphasize and, and underline uh, the fact that we have common interests. We have shared goals. Uh, we may be motivated or incentivized in different ways, and I think that's probably where some of the differences between the private sector and governments, uh, the government side comes uh, comes into play. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we're ultimately looking at the same longer t uh, longer range uh, sort of goals. You don't always share the same understanding of how to measure impact. You don't always share the same understanding of how to attribute. Uh, impacts or or outcomes that are being uh, identified and, and worked on, but that's a process that you work through. I think that you know we here in the Trade Alliance had some of those same initial challenges in terms of uh, where we wanted to uh, sort of focus our energies, what were the areas uh, geographically that we wanted to emphasize, uh, what were the kind of uh, topical areas that we wanted to uh, 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 involve ourselves in. And I think here it's really sort of uh, multiple bureaucracies learning to, uh, to, to work with each other, to understand each other, and frankly, it's a lot of personal relationships. I wouldn't be here if my company didn't see the value of my time spent as part of the E-Trade Alliance. And so that's a reality in terms So from a private sector perspective, uh, everything that we do um, has meaning, right, and brings value in terms of value proposition for the business. So the E-Trade Alliance continues to have a, a value proposition, and that is something that that for all of us, you always have to manage up and how you're selling that that internally, right, to your bosses and, and how you work. And so I, I the answer on that part is that's a very short version. When the Alliance uh, started, uh, Kathy, as you were explaining, and it was very nice to hear the story told so, so coherently and quickly, it's very important not to take that 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 the digitization has has happened. It happened for some, but it hasn't happened for all. At the same time, it's becoming the way things are, uh, and 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 if we do not address this digitization gap, uh, especially in the as productive SME sector, uh, that the divides that we're talking about that are driving a lot of the geo political conflict that are driving a lot of the de development setbacks that we're facing, uh, will not be addressed. And going forward, you know, in Africa, I believe that, you know, there is going to be a continued growth of e-commerce. Um, the COVID pandemic, you know, accelerated that shift towards online shopping and digital transactions. And these changes are expected to remain. So e-commerce is going to remain an essential part of the global economy.